Hi everyone, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. Today we're gonna to take a quick look at some scopes. Now if you'll remember the Ruger Precision Rifle I did a video on, I mounted a Nikon Buckmasters scope on it. It's a three to nine by 40 millimeter scope, which I figured would be plenty adequate for this rifle. But really this rifle deserves something with a little more power in it because uh, it's pretty accurate beyond 100 yards. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this scope off which is not a loss because I still got the Ruger 1022 that needs a scope and this is a good choice for that one. But we're gonna go ahead and take this scope off and we're gonna put the Cabela's AR rifle scope on it. Now, this is not an AR. Um, this has a BDC reticle in it that's uh, supposed to be calibrated for 5.56 or 223. but in the little booklet that comes with it, there are charts in there that show you different factory rounds where your BDC marks are gonna be where your range is gonna be. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off, put this on, sight it in, then we'll do some accuracy tests with the Ruger Precision Rifle. But we're gonna do an opening of this box and check out what's inside. All right, we've got the box opened up. Here's what's in it. You get a neoprene cover for it. I'm not a big fan of these. Of course, it does protect the whole scope, not just the lenses. Um, in the box, there's your rifle scope. Now, one of the good things about this, one of the advantages to the uh, Cabela's AR rifle scopes is that it already has the rings on it. So if you've got a rifle with a Picatinny rail on the top of it, this has already got the cantilevered mount on it. Uh, it's a 30 millimeter tube on it, so that's going to let a little more light into it. Um, it's a pretty good looking rifle or a good looking scope. I don't care too much for the logos all over it, but I mean, that's what they do. Now, also in the box is, of course, your paperwork. And like I said, there's a bunch of different. Um, charts in here, WS17 WSM, uh, 17 HMR, 22 mag, which is what I'll be putting it on, 22 long rifle, 223, which is what it's supposed to be designed for, 243, 270. There's a bunch of them in there. It'll tell you what your um, distances are on your BDC reticle. Also, of course, like every other scope you're gonna get pretty much, it's gonna come with either an Allen key or a uh, Torx key. You've got a little lens cleaning cloth that comes with it, and you got a battery because this is an illuminated reticle on there, and it'll light up so you can see in low light conditions what it is. Uh, I don't know if the setting is low enough to work with night vision goggles, but um, generally the lowest setting will work with them. But anyways, it's uh, like I said, it's a 3 to 12, which will give me a little better zoom than it will on the uh, Nikon Buckmasters I got on there. It's a pretty beefy mount that's on there. You got your turrets on top and side, you can uh, adjust them easily. It's got a pretty positive click to it. Um, I'm not gonna adjust anything yet because I gotta go out there and sight it in, but then you've got the side parallax on it, which is nice, and it goes from, I think, uh, 20 to infinity, and you've got the range markings on there, and you've got a little indicator right on the side, a little dot that shows you, you know, that's where you're, about what your distance is. is. And you can use it to kind of range things a little bit when everything's a nice, crisp focus. You can look on there and say, hey, this should be about where I'm at. But anyways, um, let's get the battery put in this thing, and then we'll uh, get it mounted on the rifle. All right, now to turn your uh, illuminator reticle on, you'll see a little dot right there on the side of it. And you see the R, you can turn it one way, it gets the red illumination, you turn it the other way, you get the green illumination. And like I said, there's five intensities on there. All right, I'll see if I can get this to show in there. It might be a little tricky, but. All right, let's get this set out of the way and get the Nikon taken off of the Ruger Precision Rimfire. This is cleared. We're going to close that and get that out of the way. Now Cabela's brand scopes, they've been around for quite a while. I'm not sure who the actual manufacturer is of them, but uh, I have one of the Covenant series of Cabela's scopes on another rifle. It's a first focal plane, which I really, really, really like first focal plane scopes because all your sub tensions are the same throughout the, uh, the zoom range on there. Now, we're gonna take this. It already has the um, mount on it, so all we gotta do is just figure out where we want 
our eye relief to be at. We'll put it right there. Now this has about, uh, it's pretty close to four inches of eye relief. We'll go ahead and finger tighten that on there right now and then we'll hold it up and see. That actually feels pretty good right there. I can see a nice clear picture inside there. If I get any closer, it's not right. All right. Now, one thing I did notice is even though this is already mounted on the scope and tightened down from the factory, it's not exactly level. I can feel it when I hold the rifle up. I, I think I've got it level and I look at the uh, reticle in there and I'm sloped off to the left quite a bit. So I will get that leveled up some and then we'll go from there. All right, one of the things you'll notice about this scope is it has pretty beefy uh, rings on it and they have six screws for each cap. So we'll go ahead and get those taken out. Check the condition of the uh, mounting points on there and then see if we can't get this thing to rotate freely so we can get that reticle leveled up with the rifle and that way it'll be level with the rest of the world when we're out there shooting. That's a pretty snug fit on these caps. And if you'll notice on there, the uh, front cap actually has a small section of Picatinny rail on it. So if you really wanted to mount a laser or whatever up there, a small light or something, you could mount it on there pretty easily, which might be beneficial on the AR, but uh, this is uh, kind of a long range rifle for me. So let's get it leveled up. All right, now I know I've got my table level. And if you look at the shelf in the background there, you can see that uh, I've got something to go by there, kind of. You can get small levels that actually sit on the uh, rail and also sit on top of the scope so you can eyeball them, make sure they're both the same. But what we're gonna do right here is just kind of rotate it so we can get the uh, reticle to line up with the edge of the table up there. That looks pretty close. All right, we'll go ahead and put our caps back on there. And if you'll notice, like I said, this is 12 screws, six per cap. What you need to do is when you put these screws back in there, you don't want to just tighten them all up at one time. You want to cross tighten them. Uh, so what you're going to do is apply the torque as evenly as possible on there because these don't just fit close together. There's a small gap between the top cap and the bottom part of the ring. And if you tighten one side before you do the other, or you tighten them unequally, then it will uh, cause your scope to shift from one side to the other. So you need to get them all in there, kind of snug them down just a little bit. Look at your gap on your cap to your base part of the ring and make sure that it's kind of even and try to tighten it down so it stays even the whole time you're tightening it. You don't want to close one side up and have a big gap on the other side and you're trying to close that gap up, and tighten it up, and you'll end up rolling your scope and you'll no longer be in level. You'll want to periodically check as you're tightening them down to make sure you haven't rotated it from one side to the other. And if everything looks good, go ahead and snug it down. Go ahead and check your eye relief again. Make sure everything's good. Give everything a final tightening, then take it out and sight it in. All right, we've got the Cabela's AR rifle scope mounted on here. We're gonna go ahead and take this thing out to the range and talk a little bit more about it. Like I said, it's a uh, three to 12 uh, second focal plane scope, 44 millimeter, nice big, lets a lot of light in there. You also have an illuminated reticle on it, which is pretty nice. Um, the turrets are pretty good size on there. They got the aluminum caps on it, easy to adjust, uh, nice positive clicks. This, this one is a quarter MOA, uh, quarter inch click. And you'll get a quarter inch per click at 100 yards. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, nice side focus on it for the parallax. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing out there when we do the test on the accuracy of the Ruger Precision Rifle. But if you can, man, uh, get on Cabela's website and check these out. I'll put a link in the description. And um, Cabela's really makes some pretty good stuff. And the nice thing about it is 
it's got a lifetime warranty on it. So as long as you're not abusing this thing, um, it should last you forever. Uh, it's guaranteed against defects in materials and workmanship. Um, a pretty good quality scope, nice and clear, um, and pretty good zoom on this one. I mean, they've got them in all different kinds of ranges, sizes, everything, everything you can imagine. And the nice thing about this, it's under $200 for this one, just barely, $199.99 or whatever. But anyways, it comes with the mount too, so that'll save you another you know, 20 to 80 bucks, depending on what kind of rings you get. It's a pretty solid, beefy set of rings on there. It's a cantilevered mount, so you can adjust it. There's a lot of adjustability on this thing. Um, not too much in between the rings there. You only got a little bit until you hit the turrets on either side. But with this cantilevered mount, you can move it forward and backwards a long way. Um, another thing I wanted you to check out on my bench here, I've got a tech mat. Um, this is a neoprene back. Uh, I believe it's a nylon or polyester, it's a synthetic cover, so it is uh, solvent resistant, oil resistant, everything. And I like this nice gray one here. This is the rifle mat because when you've got small parts like this, uh, it's easy to see them. They, they stand out. So you can, uh, if you've dropped that little pin, roll pin, or anything that you needed, you drop it on this mat, this one's easy to see. Now they are available with uh, different exploded drawings on there like if you uh, want the AR-15 one that shows the exploded view with all the parts list and everything on it um, that's another link I'll put in the description check these out this is tech mat gun accessories they also sell cleaning kits and everything and you can get them with all different firearms on there everything from ARs to Colt single actions and um, they're a good quality product non-skid back unless you get the ones that are two-sided then they have the covering on both sides so they will slide around a little bit but solvent, oil resistant and everything, and a good addition to anybody, anybody's uh, gun bench like I got here. Uh, good quality product, check them out. All right guys, that's it for my video on the Cabela's AR rifle scope. Uh, looks to be a pretty good, solid, uh, well-made scope. We're going to uh, review it a little further when I take the Ruger Precision Rimfire 22 Magnum out there and uh, sight it in on the range and go ahead and do some grouping shots and see how that thing shoots. Um, but it's, uh, I, I've got one of the Covenant series scopes and I'm really happy with it. A really a great scope. Now it is a first focal plane, so it's a little different animal, but they're, uh, pretty good quality scopes in, in my opinion. And also check out TechMat gun accessories. Uh, they make some really nice products there. They sent me this one to uh, review it and see how I liked it. And I, I use them all the time. Now, I have had some of the ones that are rubber back with the felt top. I do not like those. Small springs and stuff will get caught in there. These are nice and smooth so you don't get anything snagged on it. And uh, I, I just like them and I, I always use one. Uh, sometimes when I'm taking pictures of guns or whatever, I don't. But um, this one is pretty nice because it's, it's nothing printed on it and uh, you can see all the little parts you put on there. They don't blend in with the rest of the design on there.